Hey everybody, final thoughts time for Cargo Empire. And oh my goodness, folks, this game is a revelation for me in a very real way. Uh, particularly as it relates to one very popular genre of the board game universe that never tends to be Jensen my favorite. Pick up and deliver. Um, although it's weird. Just as a little bit of background, to me, a pick-up-and-deliver game is a game where I have an avatar on the board. I have to move them to a place, get a thing from that place, and then move my avatar slowly but surely, usually over several turns, and, and drop the thing off somewhere else. That has got to be one of Jen's and my least favorite mechanisms. But the interesting thing is, Board Game Geek, and the denizens thereof, are constantly mislabeling certain games as uh, pick up and deliver when as far as I'm concerned they're not and these are the games that are inspired by the train genre of games the 18xx games railways of the world brass more recently just this year nucleum um, games where you spend the entire game focus like a hawk on actually building up a network of rails or in some other games it might be something else like uh, outposts or whatever it might be depending on the setting of the game and then using that network you've created and sometimes leveraging the networks that other people have created you move goods from one place to another but not slowly over turns you basically just teleport them and to me those have never really felt like pick up and deliver but officially they are pick up and deliver games but i always felt like oh at least if that's going to be what you call pick up and deliver, that's a game I can get behind because there's no drudgery of slowly moving the goods from one place to another. Instead, just boom, you get it where it goes. And so, uh, Jen, I have definitely enjoyed these types of games over the years. I mean, we've enjoyed some this year. But lately, I've been finding I didn't enjoy them as much as I used to. And there were two games that have rewired my brain for what I guess I would call route building and then picking up. Route building and delivery games, let's say. Because you don't pick things up and move them. Anyway, we're right. The route building and delivery games that are, again, a very, very popular genre of board games, I think we're falling out of love with them more and more. And the first thing that made me realize this was last year playing Carnegie, which made it into my top 10 games of the year. Or maybe it just missed it, I don't remember. But anyway, Carnegie was interesting because it had all the route building, but then none of the delivery. You were just building those routes to score points. And it's not the first game to do that, but it really struck me how, wow, I don't mind. I don't miss the fact that I'm not moving cubes from place to place. Just building the route was enough for me, thanks. And so, now, sorry with the preamble, folks, but we come to Cargo Empire. Because Cargo Empire does the other thing. It says, you know what? The routes already exist. They, I mean, which is really kind of a bit more realistic, I think, in that, uh, yeah, you know what? I mean, once the routes are done, it's not, I mean, somehow, that's why the 18xx series is permanently stuck in the 1800s because uh, it's all about building the routes. I like the fact that, oh, we're in the 1900s now. The routes are already built. And this game is 100% devoted to only one thing. The delivery, the teleportation of goods from where they were manufactured to where they need to go based on the situation and trying to leverage that. And I love it. I love it in the same way that I found myself loving Carnegie. Now, don't get me wrong. Carnegie is a very different game. It's a much heavier game, etc., etc. But I think I prefer a game that is the route building and then delivery. I think I prefer to split those two things into two separates. I like the route building. I like the finding a cool way to deliver stuff. Spending resources to basically teleport something from one place to another. I really like that. Because that's the puzzle that Cargo Empire gives me. And like I said, I don't know that I can go back to brass. I'm not saying this game is a brass killer. But it's kind of killed brass for me. Because I would rather focus just on the routes or just on the delivery, not both. And honestly, while I said in Carnegie's case, you know what, there are other games that have had you building up routes not to deliver but just to score points off them. I don't think I've ever seen a game quite like this. Where, yeah, the routes are done. It's all about... Got almost, almost kind of in a ticket to ride kind of way. Hey, over time I get more cards, and eventually um, I'm going to use these two cards to be able to move this from here to here. Not to build a route like ticket to ride, but just to use the various routes that are already there to get what I need to go where to complete my objectives, to work with the public available contracts, to um, you know get my 
new, uh, what do you call them, uh, you know, trading houses in new regions so I can get access to different goods that I want to deliver to existing places so I can upgrade those other cities and every step of the way knowing that everything I do is opening an opportunity for you too. Because if I create a, a circumstance where there's going to be a perfect up city upgrade, I better do it at a time when I know that you can't swoop right in and deliver that last thing. So I've got to make sure that, oh yeah, you don't have access. You don't, what, what do you have? How, oh, you, oh, you have no ship cards. And the only steel is all the way over in Edinburgh. And you're probably not going to get them all the way down to a uh, Athens with just your train cards, are you? Okay, this is the time I can make this happen and then get the triple. Because the other half of the game, you know, I mean... This game, everything is so intertwined. We're doing all these things, then a traditional game would just be to get the points. But no, we instead are trying to make our best, smartest deliveries to get points by completing our objectives. And over the course of the game, you can get more and more of them, so you've got more and more things pulling you in different directions. But also, for this very fun race down here, where the more I advance, or the more I do truck shipments, the more my truck moves up. The more I do boat shipments, the more my boat moves up. And the important thing is, as I move up and I'm jumping from one progress track to another, these are what are giving me the resources I need to continue to be effective out here. Do, when, when my boat gets here, and I've got two more steps, do I come up this way? Because it'll give me a ship card, and I'm out of ship cards. And later on, it could get me another objective. Or do I come down this way, because hey, it'll give me a train. And with three trains, I could make an overland, and then that could push my train up, and that would get me into this position. And more importantly, I get myself another private contract with an existing city, which is going to freeze other people out and keep them out. Oh, that's good. Oh, I like that a lot. And that's a tough choice. Never mind the fact that, oh, now that my ship is so far ahead, I want to keep pushing it because even though I won't get bonuses, I can start getting points by pushing up this track. But turn order is all about pushing my truck up further. But the truck is the hardest thing to move up fast. There's a lot to consider with every turn. And even though every turn is so simple, pick an origin city that you have access to, Pick a destination city that you can reach by playing cards, play those cards, establish a new trade route, and then, based on what you did, m make progress on this little mini game down here. Repeat. You do it 12 times, and believe me, folks, the game just flies by. Um, I mean, you're so deep and rich in thought and seeing that Oh no! This is no longer public contract anymore. I don't want to make a delivery there anymore. But I still do because I still want to make deliveries to harbors because I've got that particular objective. And so the world is constantly changing based on what your opponents are doing. Your opponents are creating opportunities. <gasps> Whoa, you upgrade the city! There's now more lumber to deliver out of there and we're both in that city. Thank you! That was the lumber I needed to deliver where I needed to. So... It's a lot of fun. It's got a great solo mode, too, um, that really integrates itself well if you want to have a third player in a multiplayer game. Uh, because this one, unlike a lot of times, a lot of games say, oh, yeah, you can bring the dummy player and bring it into a multiplayer game. And often that doesn't sit well with me because through random luck, it can favor one player over another. But this dummy is very deterministic. And I think that's a really smart way to go because it means you can bring them into multiplayer games and it just creates more variety and evolution of the board. I like everything about this game. And I shouldn't be surprised because publisher Mo Ideas, man, they fly so under the radar, but they so regularly produce games that are so bonkers original. And I mean that in the best possible way. Their games are always quirky, always do things that you think, oh, I, I played a game like this, I understand. Oh, this is nothing like what I thought it was going to be, and it's like nothing I've ever played before. And they do this game after game after game. It's kind of their jam. And um, they've done it here again. And in doing it, they have literally rewired my brain for what I find that I really enjoy. Also, uh, you know, big props to first-time designer Alexander um, Bodanovsky and teaming up with designer Pini uh, Schechter. Pini... I've played a couple of his other games. Uh, just uh, last month, we played Sea Dragons, a co-design he did with Simone Luciani. Folks, I'm telling you right now, that has a chance to win the Spiel des Jahres next year. And uh, Peeny had another co-designer with that. And what was the other game Peeny did that I played? Um, oh, gosh. Years ago, a wonderful um, uh, deck-building adventure game, Edge of Humanity, which was fantastic. And sadly, was published by a publisher that shortly after publishing it went out of business. So we never got to see any expansion content for Edge of Humanity. But I still have very, very fond memory of that. Mo Ideas. 
You should see if you could pick up Edge of Humanity. It would be perfect for you. It's so interesting and offbeat and quirky, which is what you do. And you're in good with Peeny. Why not? Folks, I'm really impressed by this game. And then... I have only played the basic version. As I mentioned in the run-through, they are working on unique player powers. I think it's going to be a stretch goal because they still have to put in the time to test these things, uh, but I hope they hit it. Not that the game needs it. There is enough in here already, but then giving players unique player powers on top of everything else is just going to be the icing on the cake of an absolutely lovely... It's not a pick-up-and-deliver game. It's just a delivery game. It's just a delivery game. And... It's basically a new genre. I mean, I love it. I have one complaint. Actually, this is a bigger complaint for my wife than me. The fact that over the course of the game, you end up having several private uh, contracts that you care about. Um, you know, and your opponent maybe takes some, but there's always four on display. D my wife did find she had a hard time keeping in her head, right, with my objectives, which of these cities do I want? Because you always want to be delivering to cities that have public or private contracts so you can get those bonuses so you can scream up here. And over time, that can become very difficult to track. There's always four public ones. You've got your private ones as well. And it's it's not, you can tell, oh, it's one of mine because it's got my, I mean, I, I might have a, I might, you know, have delivered to Copenhagen, but not have a contract with it. So as the game goes on, it gets tougher and tougher because you have more and more options, but keeping track of all of them and they're changing. And what we ultimately did, you know what? Hold on, folks. I'm going to pause for a second. What we ultimately did is we got our little, plastic player chips. Uh, these are awesome. This is one of the greatest accessories you can get if you're an avid board gamer like me and Jen. I think it was my number one or my number two best, most important, most valuable accessory you can get for all your games. Uh, you can order them um, from the Board Game Geek store. That's where I got mine and I love them uh, because you can get them in multiple colors. And so what we found we were doing over time is when, um, you know, what is it? It's uh, Athens is a public contract, and Amsterdam is a public contract, and Berlin is a public contract. Where are you, Berlin? I mean, just even trying to find them. Um, and, oh, Rome. And, you know, it's one thing to find them when it's Rome. I know Rome's in Italy. It's not that hard to find. Remember, the other side of this board is going to be a fantasy kingdom. And it is kind of a shame that these cards did not do the pandemic trick of saying, hey, um, you know, well, they, they kind of show you where they are, kind of, but... I'm not zoomed in. I mean, I guess they they give you they give you a rough idea of where they are on the board, and I assume they'll do that for the other ones too. So I take back what I just said. I was thinking of a different game where I recently played a game where you had cards for locations and they didn't give you any indication. It's not this one. They did do a good job showing where they are on the card, so that helps. But still, it is much nicer. It is much easier for Jen to say, "All right, I'm the purple player, right?" And I have a contract with Frankfurt, and I have a contract with Warsaw. Where are you, Warsaw? There we are. And I have a contract with Milan, right? And then I've got a contract with Paris, right? So the, we can, the, you can just look at the board and say, okay, I want to make deliveries between my color and the uh, universal color. And then uh, and that starts helping a lot. And honestly, I don't think Jen and I would want to play this game without having some of these. And my assumption, folks, is the game is not going to come with these. These are going to have to be an extra purchase. Do a search for Rado Top 10 Accessories, and you'll be able to find a video with me extolling the virtues of these things. They are so useful. And, I mean, they're not necessary. But again, as the game goes on, there's always the four publics, and you have more and more privates. It We found it really upped the playability of the game to be able to look at the board and figure out what we want to do instead of looking at our own private contracts and our public contracts and then figuring out where they were and how many steps. It's like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah I haven't been... To, oh, that's perfect. Okay, there's one, two, three. Yeah, and they're both active, and that one will be good for me, and that will be... Yep, okay, and then I've got a train. Perfect. It really upped the playability. And with, I mean, we got about halfway through a game, and Jen was like, ah, this is too much for me to figure out where, wh who, where are my contracts? And so something like this helps immeasurably, really ups the playability on something that, you know, I mean, I'm, I am sure given enough time, it'll become second nature for us to remember what's important and what's not. But, you know, why wouldn't we use something like this? And uh, so it's just something I would give you a heads up, a pro tip to really enhance the playability of this and cut out some of the right. What is going to be the best connection considering 
you know, all of my connections that I can make. So I would recommend some of those um, in a game that I would also recommend very, very highly. That, folks, is Cargo Empire. And that was the preview. Thank you very much for watching. Have a very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Bye-bye.